Right. Well, we all know why we're here. And I think I speak for all the parents when I say how let down we all felt yesterday. And how disappointed we are in all of you. I mean, for one of you to be in court shoplifting's bad enough. But for us to find out you've been doing this as a gang. I mean, what possessed you all to go out robbing in the first place? You know, we're the ones who'll have to troop into that police station with you tomorrow. We're the ones who'll be ashamed. Well, I'm sure Rachel's ashamed of what she's done, aren't you, Rachel? I mean, I can understand your Leo getting caught up. Why Leo? Well, because he's still young. Well, that doesn't excuse him. No, I just mean he might be easily led. He's got a mind of his own. That's it then, is it? You're saying he was being led on by my Gary? I wasn't saying that. Well, I hope you weren't saying it was Rachel who led them on. Is she going to get the blame now because he's the eldest? Honestly, I wasn't saying anything. All right, now, come on. I don't think we'll get any benefits out of getting at each other. Oh, well, shut up. I think they all should have known better. I, I think that's what we're saying. Oh, hello, Eddie. Just needed a very quick word with your lady wife here, Well, we're a bit jam-packed at the minute, Dave. Well, it won't take a minute, really. Uh, Rosie, I... Oh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, would you rather we came back later? Are you all right? We're uh, just having a neighbourly get-together. Oh, lovely. That kind of thing doesn't happen often enough nowadays, does it? This isn't a residence meeting, is it? Because, you know, I haven't been informed. Uh, no, no, no panic. It's a private matter. Well, you do realise that you can't meet officially unless you inform your chairman first. Yeah, right. Uh, well, I just needed to touch base with you about your contribution to the Christmas show. No need to worry. We've nearly finished it. Um, where will you be today? Oh, La Luth, all day. Costume making, props, rehearsing the lot. We must be mad. <laughs> uh, I don't want to rush anyone, but uh, we're going to have to keep things moving here. Uh, I'm late enough away to this. Yes, right. Well, I'm sorry to have disturbed you. But uh, you, you can assure me that this isn't a residence meeting. Would we dare without our glorious leader? It's a private matter. I'll right, see right. you, Dave. OK, bye. <sighs> sorry about that. OK, OK. So, uh, anyway, uh, where were we? We were uh, just seeing what we thought of this lot. Well, no one's asked me, yeah. And I just think they're a bunch of robin scallies and they should have their hands chopped off. Well, there speaks the voice of reason. Thank you very much. Now. Aye, aye. Party time, is it? So, uh, have any of you lot got anything you want to say in your own defence? We're in one of you like uh, a leader, making the others do it. Surprised they're all too ashamed to say anything. So they should be. God knows what charges the police are going to throw at them tomorrow. Ah, she gone off all right? Only after being put around the park three times. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Exercise will do you good. Oh, as if I don't get enough running around after you. Anyway, why are you looking so pleased with yourself? <laughs> this place just finally hit me. Uh... What an amazing achievement it's been, getting it to where it is now. Why has it taken you till now to realise that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I suppose I've been too busy. Once I got my head down trying to make the place pay, that was it. Tunnel vision. You're out of the tunnel now? I'm getting there. With this new partner idea, it's got me thinking. <sighs> well, why not? I mean, we've got something really good here. I don't want to see it go downhill just because Barry Grant can't be bothered. So, does that mean Sam's a, a definite possible replacement for Barry? Well, it's just a proposal, just for now. Oh, Max, don't go having second thoughts now. I don't know. What about Barry? I mean, it was his idea in the first place, wasn't it? So? So what would he say if he was here, if he found out? Max, just go for it while you've got the chance. Be careful! This is very good of you, Sinbad. Thanks a lot. That's all right. Just as long as me back holds out. Right. Where do you want it? Uh, over by the back wall, I think. Oh, it's excellent. Yes, it's uh, Audrey's idea, actually. Oh, well, we've got to make the effort, haven't we? It's the uh, it's the backdrop for Beverly's love song. Okay, brilliant. I didn't know I was getting scenery as well. Hey, maybe you should get some of those Chippendale fellows dancing behind you. <laughs> <laughs> some people can always be relied upon to lower the tone. Right. Well, I'll send you the bone setters bill in the post, shall I? This is a marvellous idea, Audrey. It's very effective. It was dedicated to you, David. And me. So when are you going to finish making the rest of it? This is the finished article, soft dollies. I think it looks great. In fact, I think I'm going to try and find one the same to fit me. 
Well, you better get some of the St. John's ambulance fellas standing by. At least one or two of the Isle fellas take a flutter. Hey, some of the young ones as well, I hope. Well, it's good to see you still talking to us now you've hit the big time. Oh, I've got the fame going to my head. There you go, love, you're finished. Oh, let's have a look at the next one now. Oh, yeah, here we are. This is Malone's. Hey, you heard about this one, Julia? Gone and bought his own house on the close. Yeah, I did. That way. I didn't know you could buy houses with probably checks. Yeah, well, I've come into a bit of money, haven't I? Off me man. And it was supposed to be a secret, so Mandy doesn't find out. Sorry. We bought number 10, Irene's our place. So, uh, when's the do, then? What do? You and Mrs Jordash getting married, and that? We're not. Uh, so you'll be living over the brush, then, like all these young kids? I'm not going to be living there at all, am I? I'm just going to be the landlord. Sounds like a funny sort of relationship, if you ask me. Aren't you afraid somebody might tell Mandy before Christmas? Yeah, well, I am now. Well, uh, don't you think you should let her know, you know, before some little bird lets slip? Hey, I hope you're not inferring that I'll tell her. Everyone knows you're the sole of discretion, Julia, but, I mean, won't Mandy's current landlords have to tell the house has been sold? I never thought about that. I'll have to think. See if I can come up with something that'll still make it special when I do tell her. Well, I mean, it'll still make it Christmas morning, even if I tell her a week early. Hey, Bing! You want me for anything else, or what? Be with you in two ticks, Sinbad, if you just bear with me. Yeah, I'll cope. Hey, you can hold this up for me if you're not too busy. Hey, Mandy's got one of those dressmaker's dummies things, you know. You won't ask her, can you lend it? Oh, I'm glad to see you're using your brains for once. I'll pop round and ask her if I can borrow it. And while I'm there, I could tell her all about her new landlord. Julia, swear to me that you won't. Now swear it. I see. I'm the soul of discretion, aren't I? I can't believe I'm out in public doing this. <laughs> oh, come on, Wilma. Let's try and go a bit quicker, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah but I do. do. <laughs> well, I must say, Mr. Carr and his team are doing a marvellous job on the scenery, but give Audrey her due, the heart was her idea. Uh, yes, but um, I'm a bit concerned about Audrey. Oh, yeah? Hmm. It's her piano playing, mainly. I'm not convinced that she's as good as she's led us to believe. No nonsense. Why do you keep trying to get rid of her? I mean, she's put in such a tremendous effort. I think she needs an extra special thank you. You should try and think of something. But I'm not convinced that she's up to holding the whole show together. She'll be fine. How does that sound? Very good, dear. <laughs> Look, I don't know what it is that you and she have fallen out over, but I'm sure it's something quite trivial. Anyway, it's obvious she only has eyes for you. What? That's utter balderdash. She and I have got nothing in common at all. Can somebody open the door for us, please? On my way. Oh, I say, well done, girl. I've never been so ashamed in my life. What about me in the first place? Going to school being called a pop by everyone. That need to have turned you into a shoplifter. And, and he can check all those bulbs are screwed in tight before we put them up. You never give me the money for what I want. It's you that made me turn to stealing by never giving me anything. Uh, I give you what I can afford, you know that. Look, will you switch that off when I'm trying to talk to you? <sighs> Should never have let you start hanging around with Lee. I always knew he'd be a bad influence. I don't need anyone influencing me. I have got a mind of my own, you know. <laughs> don't we know it? You know what this is going to mean? Oh, what? The family's good name's ruined. Well, apart from that... We haven't got a good family name. You've got one daughter, Leslie, one's a thief, and you've got men coming in and out of here all the time. I... I do not have men coming in and out... What makes you say that? I mean, that Kenny and the window cleaner. My dad would get rid of him if he was still alive. Well, he isn't. And if he was, he'd have been a lot harder on you than I probably will be. Will you get off your backside and answer that? Well, thank you very much. I'll just come through, shall I? I'm ever so sorry to bother you. Oh, it's OK. We're just talking. Ah, oh, you put your decorations up? I bet it looked like Trafalgar Circus near when you finished. I've always wanted to go to London to see the lights. Did you want anything in particular? I'm after a favour. We're having a bit of trouble fitting one of our Christmas show costumes. It's for Mrs Malone. Quite a buxom lady. 
I'm sorry, I've already explained. I don't have a sewing machine to help at the moment. Oh, no, it's not your machine or your expertise. We were wondering if we could borrow your dressmaker stand to help us. Oh, uh, right, yes, uh, of course. I um, don't get much chance to do any dressmaking these days. Oh, that'll be marvellous. You'll save the day. <laughs> and it's all for a good cause. Your daughter's grown into a fine figure of a young woman, isn't she? Yes, she is. You must be very proud of her. I am, yes. I'm surprised you're not getting involved in this Christmas show yourself. A girl of your age should be having a lot of fun. Oh, she's very busy with the schoolwork these days, aren't you, Rachel? All the time, yeah. Right. Nice we'll take good care of it. <laughs> oh, what do you see? What do you see? Oh, I could do a waltz routine with this. Work it into the show somehow. That's if they change their mind and they want me in it after all. <laughs> I wish you'd sit up straight when we have visitors in the house. I'm tired. Well, maybe you'll be less tired when you haven't been out for a month. You are? Well, after all this shoplifting business, you know you're going to have to be grounded. A month? That's what I was thinking. Oh, over Christmas and New Year? No way! Rachel, you're in trouble with the police. You can't carry on doing what you like. I'm not staying in this house for a month. I'll go mental. Well, I don't mean you have to stay in every minute of the day. All I'm saying is I want you under my control and I want you behaving yourself for the next month. I'll be glad when I'm old enough to get out of here and get a flat, you know. Yeah, well, not as glad as I will be, young lady. Normal kids in normal families help the parents get the house ready for Christmas, you know. You know you're going to be grounded for what you've done. Is your mother back now? The trouble you've been for there, you know, it's a wonder she hasn't disowned you. It's a wonder you're not on the streets by now. I'm back. I nearly got done for driving without a licence. So... Have you talked about what we do next, then? Besides the police? I was just saying how flabbergasted we are. After all we've done for him. Now you were locked away in a secure unit for two years. And now this. What kind of a start in life are you giving yourself, eh? How could you let all them drag you into shoplifting? I've told him he's grounded. How long for? Ooh. How about till the desert sands freeze and the camels come skate gnome? Hey, Lee. Do you know how this makes us feel, eh? Parents of a scally. Parents of some criminal kid. The kind you read about in the papers. The police are going to have a field day with your criminal record, aren't they? They'll probably lock it up and throw away the key. That's it, Sinbad. Now it's as easy as falling off a log, old son. Beverly finishes a big number and up you pop. Yeah, so it's like a jack in the box. That's it. And then she gives you a peck on the cheek as if you were her one and only. Well, that'll do me. And we're going to have you done up in a hunchback of Notre Dame outfit. Mm. The bell, the bell. <laughs> That's right. Now, Beverly, have you nearly finished? Oh, I hope I can remember the words of these songs. Well, do you think I'll get a chance to rehearse them today? Well, yes, if we can get this thing to uh, stand upright. Oh, wait, Dave, I've heard my Ron say that somewhere before. Uh, About the signs in the shop, dirty ticket. Yes, well, if you could just hold on to it for a minute, please, while I try and find a piece of string. I've something. never heard my Ron say that. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I think this should be all right for Mrs Malone, don't you? Oh, she looked like something out of the Ride of the Valkyries in this. <laughs> I remember that film. Virginia Mayo was always one of my favourites. Listen, don't you think we need to take this out another six inches around the end? You know, the bassoons, I mean, it is Mrs Malone. <laughs> Looking for a length of string or something. I need a bit of a Heath Robinson affair to keep the mic stand up. Oh, we'll have a look in my bag. There are all sorts of things in there. So, we aren't going to be graced by a turn from you in our Christmas show. I think we already have a full quorum of performers. Isn't that right, David? Well, we'll have to see how we're getting on a little closer to the date. Won't we? <laughs> well, I'll always be here if you need me. Oh, thank you, Julie. Ah, must remember to add Sinbad's name to the programme list. Will do. I'm still here, you know, Bing. Oh, yes, be right with you, Sinbad. Uh, good. Oh, Beverly, there you go. Will you fix that thing for me, please? Yep. Now, let's get you inside here with the lid out, shall we? And then, uh, what if I get claustrophobic? No, 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 you'll be fine. Come on. Down you go. Good man. Now, what was this song called? You and only you. <laughs> Mr. 
this record stand up? Mm. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, he's already got a couple of wine bars to his name. Still be a little worried if he came into business with us, though. Why? What about? Well, will he have enough time for our business on top of his own? Yeah, but you wouldn't want him hanging around all the time. You'd want him to be hands off. I don't know why you don't just get on with it. Well, you know, to be honest with you, I'm a little worried about Mary Grant. I don't see why. You're the one who slogged your guts out getting the place up and running. If this is your chance to get shut of Barry, I'd jump at it. Well, I've never been that happy having him as a partner. Oh, and Sam sounds ideal. He's certainly a better long-term prospect than Barry. Oh, what do you think I should say to Barry when he gets back? If he gets back. I feel so terrible as if I'm stabbing him in the back or something. Well, knowing Barry, I'd say do it to him before he does it to you. Hmm. Oh, well. Ball's in Sam's court. Well, he knows we're interested. You could show him how keen you were by getting together to talk. All right. Will do. You, you are my world, my everything. The one and only man who could make my dreams come true. Is that all right, Dave? Tremendous, Beverly, tremendous. That's one less headache for me, not having to worry about your spot. I think I went a bit off-key in the second verse, though. I wouldn't mind going again. No, 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 it was fine, honestly. You'll bring the house down, I guarantee. I think she means she was almost in the right key for one verse. <laughs> so, uh, is that me finished, then? Oh, yes, that was lovely, thanks. Off you go. I didn't expect my live piano playing to have to compete with backing tapes, David. Right, but of course you appreciate there's no comparison between a recording and the real thing. Um, that scenery is just the job for Beverly's song, you know, really. It's nice to be appreciated. It was inspired by you. You've done a marvellous job on this show, you know. This lot could never have coped without your natural leadership qualities. Oh, you think so? Thank you very much. You're very firm, very commanding. Well, one tries, you know. There's only one problem. Now we've embarked on the good ship love affair, we don't get any chance to be alone together, do we? No, but, um, well, the thing is that there's so much to do, isn't there? I hate having to share you with other people. I want you all to myself. Well, that's very flattering, Audrey, but uh, this is a team effort, and everyone's entitled to the producer's time. It's not David the producer I want. It's David the man. <laughs> Look, Audrey, um, our little assignation, um, you wouldn't seriously ever mention that to Jean, would you? Of course I wouldn't, as long as we're both happy. As I say, there's no reason for her ever to know, unless... But you know how to keep me happy. And quiet. Hey, Bing. You're going to let me out because you're staying here for life. Oh, Lord. Oh, poor old Sinbad. Oh, oh I'm stuck. Oh, someone give us a hand over here, please. Come on, Bev. One hand each. We soon had him out. Oh, no, I think my legs are... Oh, yeah, my back's locked again, I think. Oh. I think it's made me go deaf and all. All right, Bev, just a minute. Just watch Julia. Just watch yours a minute, love. All right. Just, ah, watch your legs. Watch your legs. Watch your side. Right, Julia, you get careful. Oh, oh. You almost broke Audrey's heart there. So, what do you think about this shoplifting nonsense now, eh? Yeah, it was stupid, though, innit? And just that there's nothing to be proud of being a robber. And will you do it again? No, Dad. Gary, uh, go upstairs with Ali away, make him a sign or something. Gary, been getting a lecture then, has he, eh? I just want Ali all sorted out. Anyway, you ain't rushing to talk to Gary about what he'd been up to. Well, you worried about him turning out like me? Well, aren't you? Well, he doesn't need me to tell him he's done wrong, does he? You should talk to him. You're his dad. He looks up to you. Yeah, maybe. So what do you reckon the police will say tomorrow? We'll just get a caution and let off, I hope. You might. I'm just going to get sent straight back to the secure unit. I know, Will. I was warned to stay out of trouble. So why don't we just not go? We could run away. <gasps> As in properly run away forever. We wouldn't have to decide to begin with. We'd just see how we got on. What do you think? What would you do if we said no? 
think I'd just go anyway. I hate all the hassle we get here. No one's really bothered about us. There's someone coming out. I've been wondering where you were. What are you doing out here? Oh, I was just fed up of being stuck in my room. You're not going sneaking off anywhere? No, honest, Mum. Now, listen, I've had to talk to your dad about going to the police tomorrow and he's going to take some time off work to come with us. Now, I'm just warning you, he's going to be in a murderous mood, OK? So don't go winding him up or anything. Yeah, all right. Hey, so you staying out here? Just for a minute. Well, I'm just going round the shops. Won't be long. OK. Did you hear that? Police don't lock me up. My dad's gonna murder me. So why don't we just get off on our own somewhere? We wouldn't have to worry then. Well, how do we do it? We'd better off going to school as normal, I think, get a mark. And if we came home for our stuff at dinner time, we could just bunk off then, get a good start. We've got nothing to lose. Well, where would we go? Well, London would probably be best. London? I've never been there. Neither have I. But they'd never find us down there. Well, how'd you get there? Summit? We could get one of those coaches to go down the motorway. It's our only chance. What do you reckon? Yeah, all right, I suppose. Rachel, inside now, please. Come in. Mark. Right then, I'd better go and pack. Oh, don't pack too much and see if you can get any extra cash because we'll need it from your mum's purse or something. Right. And if we need to arrange anything else, we'll do it in school in the morning. Right. Well, you're not saying much considering we're supposed to be talking. I'm thinking. About what? About me letting Mick down by going shoplifting. I hope I never end up like you. Well, what am I like then? How can you stand in front of Mick and not let on? Make me ashamed. Not let on about what? He's gonna get tried and caught for something you done. And it's broken up with Marianne and all. What do you want me to do? Give myself up to the busies? Yeah. Well, you got to look after yourself, son. You don't want to see your dad inside, do you? I just want Mick out of trouble. There's only one person who can do that. You've got to give yourself up, Dad. You've got to help Mick. A Channel 4 video entitled Brookside the Women, featuring classic clips from the first 12 years of Brookside, together with brand new material, is available in the shops. And apologies to viewers in some parts of England for interference during tonight's Brookside. usually eats anything in the middle of the day. He's been stuffing himself silly today. Oh, Rachel was the same. Must be the cold weather. Mm. Um, I couldn't ask a favour, could I? Yeah, love. What do you need? Well, when you take uh, Lee to the police station after school, could you take Rachel for me? Of course, yeah. I mean, I feel terrible at being something so important. It's just, uh, well, something's come up and I can't really get out of it. An appointment. Oh, I, not the doctors or something? No, no, it's... um. It's just about my rental agreement on the house and payments and stuff. I mean, nothing very interesting, but I do really need to be there. I mean, if I could get out of it, I would. Oh, well, she can come back to ours and have some tea, and then I'll get them to do their own work together until you call for it. Oh, thanks very much. You've almost made Rachel late here. Yeah, I'm sorry. See ya. You look like you're going on your holidays, size of your bag. Um, it's me kit. It's for games. Thought that was tomorrow. They've moved it. They're always changing the timetable around. 
Now, don't forget you two. We're seeing the police at home time. So have a wash and comb your hair before you come out of school. And look out for us by the gate. We'll go straight there. Are you sure that'll be all right? I mean, I'm sorry I won't be there. But... Oh, honestly, love. Eddie's getting out early from work, so at least there'll be the two of us there. And anyway, the police are only going to scare them. They won't be doing anything serious. But it won't harm the kids to think otherwise, eh? Right, well, thanks again. Mm, no problem, love. See ya. Have you got all your stuff? I think so. Do you think this is a bit all running away? Well, mine don't. Come on, let's get going then. Dad. What's up with you now, eh? Are you going to tell the police it was you that done the robbery? I'm going to do something cleverer than that. I'm going to finish my shift like normal, then I'm going to pack my bags and I'm gone. I don't need to get done for anything. I've had enough of all this. What about Mick getting done, though? That's life, isn't it? Anyway, Mick's no mug. He can look after himself. Hiya. What's up with your dad? Oh, he's just in an hour with me. You're going to be late for school. Oh, I had to come back for my homework. Hey, do your laces up before you fall over them, mate. <laughs> All right. Hiya. All right. Hey, hang on. I'll walk around to school with you, Zay. We're not going into school. Where are you going then? Should you tell him? Can you keep a secret? Of course I can. Come here then. We're going to London. On a school trip? No, and you mustn't tell anyone, remember. We're running away from this place because we're getting too much hassle and pressure. Yeah, and because of what the police are going to do to us. They'll make it even worse for you if you're not here. No, they won't. Anyway, you're going to leave for school if you don't get a move on. Can I come with you, then? No, go on. You can come and find us when you're old enough. She is. Did you manage to get any extra money? Well, we've got some bits of food and stuff. Do you think we've got enough of what we saved up? Enough for the coach fare and maybe a few burgers. And I've got some spare as well. well come on, then. Let's get going, eh? Aye, aye, look out. Schoolies are hanging out in the tunnel having a slight fag in the dinner hour. No, we weren't. Or a slight snog. We're on our way in now, actually. Well, we're sorry to interrupt whatever it was you were doing. We weren't doing anything. Yeah, we believe, yeah. So, are we going for it? Well, I'd rather be in London than in prison. Come on, then. We're going to miss the coach if we don't get moving. All right. Celebrating Christmas early. Yeah, might as well get in the party mood, man. Oh, yeah. Any invites going? I doubt it. Well, we could stretch one more, couldn't we? Well, it'll probably be full of all our Boris student friends. I could come and liven them all up for you then, couldn't I? Well, there's too many men coming as it is. Well, we'll just have to invite more women then, won't we? Well, if you don't want me, I'll just go home. No, no, no come ahead, mate. It's Christmas, isn't it? Casey, what? Switch that off. What for? Okay, it's sort of. Someone at the door? Could be Mick to complain about the noise again. Oh, well, if it is, we'll have to buy him some ear plugs. There's no turn that down. <sighs> oh, I'm sure I heard something. Maybe your mic was right. Maybe the flat's haunted. Nah. Merry <laughs> Crimbo, girls. It's party time. Oh, we've just finished cleaning in here. Excellent. That means we can get straight down to the serious business of having a good time. You don't mind, do you? Of course you won't mind. Not when you find out how many fellas are coming. Well, are we going to feed everybody? Well, we'll just black some past itself by date off my dad. You know, just get some curry going or something. There you go. Your own private supply of mistletoe each. Ah! As long as I don't have to kiss him. Hmm. Um, these lads who will come on, they're not all students. No, of course they're not. Um, anyway, who said you could have a party in here? Well, we put it to a vote and you won. Come on, let's go and get change before anyone comes. Oh, 
quiet to go. I felt awful being stood on the street corner for that long. I'll pick you up at your place next time. No, that'd be worse still. Anyway, how many more next times are going to be? Well, I've sorted out a new place for us to go today. It's a mate of mine's flat. Well, more of a bedsit, really. It's one he rents out sometimes, but nobody's lived there for ages. Still, it'll be private. We're gonna need more women, you know, especially the amount of lads you're coming. Well, I could run a few people from college, and I could try Emma from work, see if she wants to come. Sound, yeah. All right, I'm gonna ring her. We'll cope with any number of unattached females, won't we? Get a bucket of cold water for him. Hey, don't try too hard to find more girls. Me and Jackie want to have first pick of the lads. Okay, yeah. see you in a bit. It's mad this party. I can't really afford it. You know. Oh, no, neither can I. Yeah, well, Christmas, innit? Yeah, I suppose as long as my wife doesn't find out I'm partying instead of buying me little girl prezzies. There's got to be no problem there. Well, the Christmas will bring us something. Yeah, of course you will. Wonder what he'll bring me. Oh, well, you never know. Maybe Beth's mate Emma will turn out to be the girl of your dreams. I hope so. So we go back to the flat, OK? Get a few things packed up and then we're off to the rail, all right? Just you and me, son. How about me, Mum? Well, we'll phone her and tell her when we get there. She can come and join us when she's better than out the Aussie. Well, can't I say to her out when you're my mates? There's times when you've got to move fast, son. Times when things are closing in on you. We're ready to go down the police station. We can pick Leo up from school on the way. We, um, won't be going, Mick. Greg, this is a formal caution job with the police. We can't just not go. Well, it's a waste of time, isn't it? Going for a lecture off some old duffer in a uniform. It's your life, Gary. I'd better get going. I don't want to be late. Can I just go with them? Yeah, if you like, but don't forget what we're supposed to be doing back at the flat. I won't. What'll happen to Mick if we just disappear? Well, you never know with the law these days, do you? You might get away with it. You know, with it being his first offence. What if he doesn't? He'll end up in prison for something he hasn't done. One thing you've got to learn in life. Look after number one, son. And, hey, another thing. You're going to have to learn to harden up, lad, all right? All right. Oh, hi, yeah. Gosh, somebody's going to be wrapping a lot of presents. Or oh, one big one. Well, it would have to be very big. Well, how about the size of a house? Do I get any clues? I've just given you one. Well, you're not wrapping up a house for somebody, are you? Well, a house that's mine to wrap up. I've just bought it. A house with a number 10 on it, and I'm not talking about the one in Downing Street, either. Are you kidding? Hours? Clang, the penny drops. Your mum gave me a big drop since she sold the house. 45,000. It. Yeah, I've done the old mortgage bit, the lot. Beth Jordash, you have won tonight's star prize. Meet your new landlord. <laughs> hey, your money troubles are over, kid. Oh, does Mum know yet? Well, she's about the only one who doesn't. That's why I'm going round there to wrap your house up now. I want it to be the biggest and best Chrissy present she's ever had. Oh, she's going to be absolutely thrilled. Oh. <laughs> you need any help? No, no, no. I'm just whizzing back to the flat to pick up some tape and scissors and stuff, you know. So, does this mean that you're going to be moving in with us and finding us for the best bedroom? Well, no, I mean, I'm going to be like an absentee landlord, probably, you know, treat it as an investment. Well, that reminds me, I couldn't borrow your front door key, could I? Because I fancy laying on a bit of a spread for it as well. I don't believe this. Yeah, something that'll really knock her out when she comes home. Of course, yeah. She's going to be gobsmacked. Well, she deserves a bit of luck, doesn't she? There you go. I'd love to see her face. Hey, yeah, uh, she isn't around, is she? I mean, I've tried phoning to check. No, she's gone out. She'll be out all afternoon. She was with Rachel, I think. <sighs> well wasn't very successful, was it? I'm sorry. I expected his flat to be a lot cleaner than that. That place needed to be condemned, never mind cleaned. Well, we can't go back to mine because of my mother. So, does that mean we'll have to call it off then, at least for this time? Well, I could come back to yours. You know how I feel about that. I don't see we have many other options at the moment. Well, apart from leaving it this time... Mandy, I've set my heart on being with you today. I can't just walk into my house with you in broad daylight. Well, we'd be one step closer to clearing all your debts off, wouldn't we? Right. 
just this once. But we arrive separately and don't park your car outside. Come on, you know I wouldn't embarrass you like that. I'll come back later, just as if it was uh, a normal visit. The girls won't be around, will they? <laughs> no. Left at university and Rachel's going to a neighbour's after tea. Great. I look forward to it then. Okay, now you two. Everything the sergeant said's been for your own good. And you're lucky to be getting over just a caution, aren't you? Thanks, Sergeant. And let's hope it's the last you see of either of them, eh? All right, Eddie. All right, Mick. Uh, haven't seen Leo, Rachel. We were supposed to meet them outside school and they weren't there. We've come here now and they're not here either. All right. Uh, you two don't know where they are, do you? Hmm? Well, if they're not in school and they're not here, God knows where they are. Do you think they got scared about what might happen? Well, let's not let the imagination start running while they. Come on, we'll check the mates' houses first. I just got this feeling. Look, they're probably hiding out somewhere thinking they'd be forgotten, you yeah. know? I hope you're right. Come on, let's get looking. Looks like this could turn into an all-nighter, you know. Well, I told you, the best part is always the ones that aren't planned. Oh, Jackie said that we can have her room if we want afterwards, in case we want to crash her. Oh, yes, um, see how it goes, eh? Mm-hmm. Hey, look at him now, the snake. I mean, if he comes near me with that mistletoe, I will die. It's very old tradition, you know, getting a kiss under the mistletoe. It's supposed to bring you luck, wealth, happiness, all kinds of other things. But like cold sores, you mean? Yeah, them as well, I suppose. <laughs> this is the last thing I want to be doing tonight. Making pizzas and being nice to people. I could help you. No, you're all right. Anyway, Dad's going to be expecting you back at the flat soon, isn't he? Oh, look, um, you can hang about here if you want. Grab yourself a can. I wonder if uh, the banks have found Rachel and Leah. Probably. You don't know why they didn't turn up, do you? Probably scared. Yeah. Hey, listen, I was impressed with you coming down the station with me. I was quite proud of you. Didn't want to let you down. Should have been your dad, though, shouldn't I? I'm used to him letting me down. Hey, look, he's been through a few tough times lately, hasn't he? He's really decent skin. That's what everyone thinks. Look, he's going to be wondering where you are. Better get off then, I suppose. Yeah, OK. Look, tell your old man I'll see him later for a shift, eh? Okay. Wait, I'm gonna have to have a word about that music. I can't let myself think here. Better than work, this is. No, oh, you can say that again. I've just stole that car's mistletoe. I was trying to snuff you. <laughs> He's such an idiot. He thinks he's God's gift. Is there anyone here you fancy? Mm, no, not really. Mm. What about you? Well, your meat, Mike's not bad. Well, I'll go and see if you can get a kiss off him. You got a mistletoe? Wouldn't want to tread on your toes. He's with you, isn't he? No, of course he's not. We're just friends. Go on, go for it. All right, mate, me old mate, come to join us, have you? Well, not really, mate. I couldn't see there's any chance you could turn the volume down a bit. It's not too loud, is it? Look, I don't want to come across as an hour mark, but it's making the old teeth roll, you know. Is it too loud? No, no, no problem, sis. Mick was just being neighbourly, joining us for a drink. I don't know about that. Oh, come on, mate. Just to show there's no hard feelings. Come on, get in the crimbo spirit, Tom. You sorrows. Why not? Got nothing else to lose. Right. right. What do you want? Lager, lager, or lager? I suppose a lager's out the question, eh? One lager coming up. <coughs> Looks more like a bar eater. Cheers, mate.
This is turning out to be a good party. Yeah, it comes as a mess full of students and all our mates' mates. And our wrinklies like me. Oh, oh you don't count, you're the neighbour. <laughs> yeah, do you want another drink? Uh, no, thanks. I should be getting off, you know, paying some money. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right, Mike. Hey, listen there, you must be under a lot of pressure these days, you know, with all the court case stuff and that. Yeah, try not to let it get to me, mate. Yeah, best way, I suppose. Do you want a drink? Um. No, you're not right. Right, so better get this to Beth before she dies of thirst. See you later. See you later. Oh, thanks. Hi, hi. Surprised seeing you still there. I wasn't sure about coming up. Well, what's up? Not really. I waited downstairs for you, but you didn't come back down. I know. I came up to complain about the noise, and they twisted my arm as I was staying for a baby. Let's see if I can uh, grab you a drink. No, you're all right. I'm not stopping. I've, uh, got to get off. My dad wants me to go to real with him. You mean on holiday? No, to live with him. No. What do you mean for good, like? That's what he said, yeah. He's not giving me much notice, is he? Well, he said he had a word with you the other week. Uh, Look, I better go. Hey, Gary, you sure everything's okay? I don't want to go with him. Have you two had a row? Sort of. Look, let's see if I can uh, blag you a drink, eh? It was me owl, fella. What are you saying? It was me dad. Has he done something to you? Oh, he's been lying all the time. It was him that did the robbery. It was him that did the lighter attack snatch. He was gonna let you go down for it. Where is, where is he now, Gary? He's getting his stuff from the flat. Then he's getting off. He's waiting for me. I knew they wouldn't be in there. Well, anyone would try, though, wouldn't it? Do you think Mandy will be in by now? I expect so. Where was it she said she had to go? Something about seeing the landlords about the rent, I think. Well, she must have been held up somewhere. Hey, Mick! Sorry, Eddie. Uh, listen, you still haven't seen anything of our Lee or young Rachel, have you, mate? Sorry, mate. <sighs> Mick's in a bit of a hurry, isn't he? Oh, where can they be? I just want to know they're safe. Well, we could have a drive into town, see if they're mooching around the shops. You know what they're like. It could be anyway. But they might have arrived home and we've been out looking. We should go and check there first. Right, and we can check out Mandy while we're there. What if they're not there? What if Mandy knows nothing about them? Well, it'll have to be the police then, won't it? Let's just go and ask the girl in the petrol station. She might have seen them hanging around. <sighs> this is very cosy. It's nice and warm in here, you know. Do you, do you mind if we leave the light off? I'd like to look at you. Well, I prefer it left off. Anything you say, sweetheart. <clears throat> what are you doing here? Why have you done this to me? You what? You did it, didn't you? Did what? The wages that I'm getting done for, you did it. Rubbish. Who told you that? I told them. You told them. You kept me back. You did it, didn't you? No, I didn't. I would miss it. I'll tell you. Ah! Admit it, you bastard. Ah! Admit it. Oh, right, Admit oh, right, it. Oh, right, oh, right, I did it. Right. We're going to go down and tell the busies. Oh. Now you get in the van. No! All right, go easy, man. Go easy. I thought you'd put me through. You screwed up my wedding. I've been sat in a cell because of you. I've been had up in court. I've had my name plastered all over the newspapers. And you want me to go easy? Mick, cool it. Right. Are you going to go in there and tell them what you've done? Or do I have to drag you in? I walk in. And what are you going to tell them? That I did the light detect job. The what? The light to take wages snatch, all right? Now just let me do it. I don't need you dragging me around. Gary, 
I know it might not feel like it, but I'm telling you, you've done the right thing here today. Even though it's hurting you. What's going on here, McGuire? What do you think you're doing? Get out of my way, friend. No chance. I said, get out of my way! Monday. Hey. What's the score? Monday. You all right? Is everything okay? Uh, I'm sorry about Mr. McGuire. He's, um... He's such a busy man. He's always in a rush. We've been trying to contact you since tea time. Oh, sorry. I, uh... I've, uh... not been contactable. Was it something to do with Rachel? You haven't seen her tonight, have you? I haven't, no. Why? What's happened? She's gone missing with our Lee. They never went into school, this, have we? They never turned up at the police station. I've been out of my mind with worry. They've just gone. A Channel 4 book entitled Brookside Life in the Close is out now in most bookshops, price £14.99. After the break, Pete McCarthy takes a trip to the Emerald Isle in Travelogue. Find an arcade, get a warm. Oh, I can't afford to spend money in arcades. Well, you can just hang around. Loads of people do that. Come on, we can walk around and see the sights. I don't know, I feel like brushing my teeth. I'm all stiff. Oh. Do you reckon we should just go home? We can! We'll end up stuck away in prison if we go home. Come on, we'll survive. I've never spent a night on site before. Me neither. We'll find somewhere proper for tonight. You've had any news about him during the night, have you? Eddie's on the phone to the police now, checking. About you? <sighs> Don't be a mum, eh? Look, I'm sorry about what was going on when you called round last night. I don't know what it must have looked like. Oh, don't even mention it, love. I'm not one for being into other people's yeah, business. Yes. What's the idea of having that big bow around your house? Quite. I'm not sure. It's some sort of practical joke, I think. Mm. Still no news, I'm afraid. Sergeant says to stay off the line just in case the kids were trying to phone us. There's uh, some tea made if you want some, love. No, thanks. Uh, I've been drinking tea all night. I was hoping Beth would arrive home sometime, but she didn't. All right. Oh, um, 
Oh, Carl came home late from a party over the salon. She already said something about Beth stopping over there with her boyfriend. Mike, isn't it? Oh. Oh, right. Well, I'll, I'll try there, then. I'll, uh, go and listen to the news. Just in case. Do you know, I can't help feeling that... Well, Rachel must really hate me doing away like this. Oh, now, come on, love. You can't blame yourself. Teenagers are just teenagers. Couldn't care less about anyone but themselves. Doesn't mean you're a bad mum. Dreadful feeling not knowing where they are, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? Oh, I'd better go and see if Beth's round at the flat. anything doing? Just someone to find her and bring her home safe. Yeah, well, I expect your boyfriend Kenny will be doing that for you, won't he? He is not my boyfriend. Look, what you saw last night... I don't want to hear it. Why does it say sold to Sinbad? Why do you think I was here last night? I was wrapping up the house for you. I bought it. And it was going to be the greatest Christmas present I've ever given anyone. And what do I find? You in bed with him. Where did you get the money from to buy a house? From me, ma'am. She sold her house and gave me a check. And because I got enough of a whack to buy the house, Stupid as I am, I thought I could use the rest to pay off your debts to Maguire. How long have you had that money? A couple of weeks. Who cares? <laughs> a couple of weeks? Well, why didn't you tell me? Is that all I'm worth now, is it? A big laugh for trying to sort out your life for you? You had that money. So I'd already found a way to sort out my life, get rid of my debts. That's why Maguire was here last night. What you saw. Oh, you didn't. Tell me you didn't. Well, how else was I supposed to feed and clothe my daughters, eh? I mean, Rachel was being called a parv in school, Beth was about to leave university. It was all because of me. I was the one who got us into those debts, and it was up to me to get us out of them. Yeah, but nothing. Not by doing that. I can't believe that you did that to pay off your debts. But all you said to me. I'm not feeling able to go with another man again. You go with him for money. I've got to find Beth. After all we've been through together. Most impressed by their commitment. Bye. <coughs> was that Audrey? It was indeed. Did you tell her I've been stricken? I did. And most concerned she was too. But, um, did come on rather quickly. Oh, I feel terrible about missing today's rehearsal. I feel like I'm letting everyone down. Especially if we have to cancel the show because of this wretched bug. Don't worry yourself not, my dear. If the producer can't get to the rehearsal, then the rehearsal must come to the producer. I've invited Audrey and the gang round here. Yeah, all right, all right, I'm coming. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, can I come in? Paul's mum said she thought you'd stay the night round here with uh, Mike. Yeah, I did after the party. People crashing everywhere. Are you all right? Yes. Have you got me t-shirt on? Oh, hello. Um, sorry if I've woken everyone up. Oh, all right, Miss Jordash. 
Look, can I get you a coffee or something? I'm, I'm sorry to come barging in like this, but... Um, Rachel's gone missing. She didn't come home at all last night. So, are you sure you don't mind looking after them? Of course not. Thomas will be in his element with them all here today. <laughs> Run through, darling, and pester your grandfather. I say, oh, such a lot to do to have this show ready for I Christmas. think I'll make you oh, yeah, secretary of the escape committee, old son. Not that we've well, got much chance of getting away. <laughs> David, your dedicated band of starlets are here. <laughs> She's just gone off to sleep. You know, this is really good of you. Are you absolutely sure? Go on, off you go. Have a good day. You deserve it. I hope you're doing something exciting. So do I. Ah, visiting a round table, pal. Uh, mixing a bit of business with pleasure for once. Come on, Penny. You'll think we've forgotten her. Oh, is Penny going to? Yeah, I thought she might like a breath of country air. Well, have a wonderful time now. Move on and make room for the next right. shift. Don't you think it's time you got rest? Jean, I'm really not up to this. Don't you think you could cancel the whole thing? Nonsense. It'll be a tonic for you. Just you go. Just through, everyone. That's one step. Hello, Jean. Hello, Jean. Hello, Hello, Bill. I'll put the kettle on. Hello, David. How's the patient? Well, much better for seeing all of you. Oh, we couldn't leave you stuck here all alone, could we? <laughs> Excellent. I insisted we all come round, keep things moving. Show must go on, remember? <laughs> yes, of course. I don't want to go in. You'll kill me? No, he won't. He's your dad. He's already spent two years in prison. Now he'll have to go back. He's only got me to blame for snitching on him, hasn't he? No, you didn't. You'd done the right thing because you were honest and you spoke the truth. And your dad's only got himself to blame for... well, for getting himself into trouble in the first place. I still don't want to see him. Well, at least come in with me. Look, I'll go in and see him first. Check out where his head's at. Who knows, a bit of time locked up may have calmed him down a bit. Listen, I'll knock for Carl, see if they've had anything. All right, okay. thanks, Mike. Thanks. Look, Mum, don't worry, she'll be all right. Didn't expect to find you two together, you know, overnight. We only slept next to each other. Well, how could you do that when you're a lesbian? Because we're friends, and friends do that kind of thing. Well, I didn't mean anything. I just thought maybe you and Mike might be... Well, I haven't suddenly turned straight, if that's what you mean. No, of course not. Beth? Me and Carl reckon we should go into town, have a little wander around, see if we can see them. They could just be hanging around the shops or anything. Oh, do you think there's any chance? Well, at least we're doing something. Right, well, I'll stay with Mum. OK, I'll see you later. See ya. Oh, sorry, Simba, I didn't get round to wrapping up the house for you, then. How do you know about that? Well, he told me. Loads of people know. They've all been keeping it secret from you. Oh, his dad shoved. I've never seen him so happy. <laughs> So where are we going to sleep tonight, then? Well, what about one of those bed and breakfast signs we saw from the bus on the way in? Have you got enough money? Just about. Yeah, we'll be sharing a room. It'd probably be cheaper if we did. Well, wouldn't they want to know if we were married or something? I don't know. Let's just go and try it. Or do you want to spend another night on the side? There's a creep over there. Keep watching us. Don't look. Well, we could have had if I wasn't paying so much maintenance to Susanna. Hi, how is everyone? Excellent. <laughs> Just admiring your frontage. We can say that to all the boys. Come on in. <laughs> I brought up some mulled wine, the old warm welcome routine. Oh, very festive. Brilliant. How are you, Sam? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Fine. Delighted to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. I've taken a bit of a chance and got the horses saddled up. I take it you're all right. Oh, sounds good to me. Well, I haven't ridden since before I had Thomas, but I'm sure I'll cope. How about you, Max? I always remember sitting on the sofa, playing cowboys and Indians. <laughs> Great. Well, let's get to it. Right. Bet you made up seeing me in here, getting what I deserve. I wouldn't miss this kind of life on anyone. Could have been me locked up, though, couldn't it? I suppose. How could you have let me go down for a crime that you committed? 
How can you do that to someone, someone you know is innocent? I don't know. It's been too long behind bars. Couldn't face it again. Wanted a life, not this. I'd given you a chance, Greg. You had a job. You were starting a new life. I believed in you. What the hell do you think I'm doing here now? Yeah, no. And the thanks you got was me standing by and watching you get your life destroyed. Almost. I wouldn't let it happen, you know. If our Gary hadn't have opened his mouth. He's here, you know. Too scared to come and see you, though. Well, what does he think I'm gonna do? Tear him apart for getting you locked up again. He knows I wouldn't do that. No. But you're his dad. He sees you as the big hero. Just robbing what he wants whenever he wants it. Will it be made up if I go down there, won't he? Seeing me locked up with a bunch of rapists and murderers. I'll be just the sort of old fella he can be really proud of. Is that what you want him to love you for? Being some bad scally running around the place with guns all the time? Hey, what of it is? Gary's a lad you can be really proud of. Because inside he's a really good kid. But right now he's on the entertaining out bad. He needs someone to look up to, Greg. You don't want him to go through what you've been through, do you? Hey, why will he listen to me, eh? You missed out on him growing up because you've been behind bars. He's had no one there to lead him. No one to show him how to grow up. He needs you now. He's waiting out front. Talk to him. Tell him that you're not some big hero. But a fella that's made some bad mistakes. And that what you've done isn't exciting or right. But wrong. If I bring him in. You talk to him. This looks absolutely ridiculous. I think I'll go without. Oh, no, you don't, Max. You're going to need all the protection you can get. Oh, well, thanks very much. It does make you look the part, Max. Oh, do you think so? It's a year since I've been riding. It's stiff tomorrow, then. As long as I'm in one piece. Listen, about this by my partner, have you, uh, have you had any more thoughts on him? Well, I've discussed it with my solicitor. And? Thanks, Christina. He seemed to think it might be an option for me. Expand a bit out of the wine bar trade. I'd like to come and have a good look over the place with you sometime. Oh, of course, yeah, any time. And have my accountant scan the books. Now, I thought I'd put you on turbo here. It's a bit lively sometimes. You know the sort. Fit your spirit. Turbo. Right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, steady on. Turbo. Uh, <laughs> Left foot in the stirrup, Max. Otherwise, you'll end up facing the wrong way. Oh, okay. I was only testing it. Right. Uh, no sign of any missus, Sam. He's just come out of a rather messy divorce. Oh, poor lamb. Place this size wasted on little old Sam. And his best four-legged friend, Turbo. Right. Almost. I should have been on the horse There before. we go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just a bit out of practice, that's all. Uh, get the hang of it again. Walk on. Right. Come on, walk on. Walk on. Walk. Step. Come on. Turbo. Just letting her stretch her legs, that's all. It's a him, Max. So how are you then? Mick says you're really worried that I might tear you apart. Says you're worried because you told the busies about me. Well, me dad, aren't you? Yeah, well, even dads screw up sometimes, lad. I felt really bad. You know, splitting on you. Not as bad as I feel now, stuck in here. Because I put you there. Hey. I put myself there, lad. Do me a favour. When your ma's better, take care of her for me, eh? She's gonna need a big fella like you round the house now. Not some no-mark like me. 
You're not numb after that. Yes, I am. The way I screwed Mick up. After what he's done for you and for me. Don't try and be like me, son. Be like Mick. He's a good man. Time's not my own anymore, son. I don't want to get into any trouble while I'm in here, do I? Eh? You're a decent fella, Mick. Gary's lucky having you for a mate. I'll keep an eye. I booked a single room. She said, no problem, as long as I pay by cash when I get there. I told my auntie he's coming to meet me in a couple of days. That's brilliant. But what about me? Well, I'll go and get the keys and everything. Then we'll bug you in when she's not about. Oh, do you think we'll have her on telly? Might do. Anyway, at least we'll have a bed for the night. You will. I'll have to sleep on the floor. I wouldn't mind if we shared. Uh, I think I'd better sleep on the floor. we enough trouble at home as it is. Do you reckon we should phone them? Tell them we're all right. Oh, the problem haven't even noticed we've gone yet. I'll go and get the keys. Whoa, whoa! Is there something wrong? We have a problem, but we think we might also have a solution, don't we, Mrs. Crosby? We've lost our dame. Poor Mr. Brennan. His number's come up for his hip operation. Oh, Lord, no. That means we lose our whole section. I had him lined up as one of the main attractions. He's very popular. He was terribly disappointed. Well, looks like we'll have to consider cancelling the show. Well, it's not too late to rehearse somebody else in. But who? it has got to be someone who knows the show inside out. There's no time. We open on Boxing Day. I think he'll make a marvellous dame, don't you? Me? I think we can squeeze him into the frock. I'll go and get it. No, no, absolutely not. We really must spend some time alone together. Would you? Yes, I know. I'd hate to think you were going to lose me and fling me aside. How else am I supposed to interpret your actions? No, no, it's, it's not that. It's what well, you see, the, the show it must go on. And so must we. You know how I feel about you. And I know the feelings mutual. We have something special. And I don't intend to let it go. Here we are. If we can't get it done out, we can always camouflage the pin. Hello, pizza parlor. Okay. You do. One. Me. Right. You told me before they got off. Yeah. Have you told anyone? So Not nah, just you. Do you reckon you should tell me that? It'll be about 20 minutes, mate. Okay. I don't think so. They'll be in bigger trouble if they get caught. And you'll get them as well. We really have got to go, Pen. We've got to get the kids to bed. Oh, look, I'll make my own way home. Max, I'll, uh, I'll show you to your car. Yeah. This partnership idea. I'm very interested. In fact, I think we should run with it. Oh, great. I'd be delighted. Well, you're a fast worker. Sam's just asked me to save for supper, that's all. And? Some things. Well, Barry's in for a few surprises when he gets home, isn't he? New partner for Max. Now, and don't new... let your imagination run away with you. Merry Christmas, Pam. All right. Yeah. Um. I just came out to see if there was any news about Rachel. Yeah, nothing. Um, well, if you'd heard anything, you'll let us know, won't you? Do you want to come in and have a talk? No, I don't think so. Well, it is your house now, I suppose you're entitled to. No, um, I better get off. I've got loads to do. Quit for the landlady sees you. What are you doing? This lock doesn't work properly. 
I'm not taking any chances. Looks like someone's been on the beer. Oh, smells like someone's wet the bed and all. Oh, these sheets are gross. Better than a park bench, I suppose. <sighs> What's the noise? Oh, sounds like a train or something. It's going to be mares again. Right, well, here we are then. At least we're off the street. Do you think there'll be any cockroaches? For breakfast, probably. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Brookside, the magazine, is out now with features and profiles on the cast, price £1.95 from the usual shops. Get on? Well, I mean, it was a bit of a surprise when he asked you to stay over, and Max and I were just wondering. Oh, so you and Max had a good old chinwag about it, did he? Oh, God, no! Well, I mean, maybe we did just discuss it just a teeny weeny little bit. I slept in the spare room, if that's what you want to know. Oh, well, it did cross my mind briefly. I mean, he's an attractive guy, and. Oh, don't think I wasn't tempted, but everything was strictly above board. Hello? Anyone home? Ah. Oh. Oh, could you make a start by bringing in the rest of the stuff from outside? And then um, I've got a whole list of other things for you to be getting on with. I want this place just right for Christmas. Uh, hang on, Pen. If you don't mind me saying, like, Barry's my boss. And he's told me to concentrate on my work at the club. We've got three office dues on there tonight. And I've got a job to do at the restaurant. I need help. I mean, Barry does implore you to help out here, doesn't he? That is the arrangement. I don't think this is on. I'm going to have to mention it to him if he phones again. He's phoned you? When? Last night at the club. Well, did he say if he'd phoned here at all? No, didn't mention it. Just said he was trying to get home for Christmas. Oh, well, in that case, if he's coming home by Friday, that's all the more reason why I need you to help out here. So could you get on with it, please? I've got to get out of here now. The manager fellow's just stopped me, asked me what's going on. He's dead suspicious, asking me when my auntie's going to turn up. Where are we going to go when we've left here? We'll find somewhere. Where, though? We've hardly got any money left. We'll manage somehow. How? Leave it to me. I'll find us something. I got us this place, didn't I? Uh, just come in. So you were tempted with Salmon? Oh, very. I think he was, too. But? Oh, it's Barry. What about Barry? Oh, not down there, please. Somebody might tread on it. I feel guilty, I suppose. But why? It's Barry who should feel guilty. 
He's just dumped you and gone off to look after his busy mate. And at Christmas, your busiest time. Yes, but we've made a commitment to each other. I mean, I know he hasn't phoned or sent a postcard or anything, but... Well, that's just Barry, isn't it? I shouldn't have stayed with Sam. It seems disloyal. Do you think Barry Grant would think twice about being disloyal? I mean, he's dumped Max as well as you. I'm afraid I shan't be sorry if Sam buys him out. I feel a bit guilty about that as well. I mean, I think we all got carried away by the heat of the moment. Oh, Pen, don't go backsliding now or else I'll have Max doing the same. You know it makes sense. Dump him on both counts. Is that it, then? Um, no. Could you get the steps out? I need you to put some decorations up. <sighs> well, you wouldn't want your employer coming back to a miserable, undecorated house now, would you? Where she's gone. Mum, there's nothing here. She's taken everything with her. No, there's got to be. Uh, Mum! Look, you stuck in the back of this place. Just leave me alone. I, I want to know where she is. They can't just Mom, disappear. Stop I've got it. to find something. We're going through down. town. Sorry. She's right, man. You can't carry on like that. I've got to find her. I just feel so useless. I'm going to go and talk to her friends and... Simba's going to look round town again, isn't he? You stay here and wait for her to call. It's the best thing to do, you know. I mean, you better be here just in case the police do call back. I better go. Bye, love. What would you do without her, eh? Why did you do it, Mand? Why did you go with Maguire? Oh, I can't talk about that while Rachel's missing. Yeah, well, I need to. I need to know why you do that to me. I mean, my head's totally cabbaged about this. You don't owe me, Simba. I know that. <sighs> why do you let these men bully you? God, I am sick of hearing that old one. I mean, I suppose you think I'm one of these women who just wants men to control me, abuse me. You think it's my fault. I'm not saying that. I just want to know why you did it, how you could do it. Anyway, what about you? Weren't you trying to run my life, control me, when you bought this house from under our feet? I mean, you just presumed I'd agree and go along with you. You didn't even tell me. You were trying to buy me just as much as Kelly Maguire. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. I wasn't buying you. I was trying to help you. Well, it's not the same as going with somebody just because you can't afford to pay off a loan. Isn't it? No. No, it isn't. I bought this place because of, because of the way I feel about you and the girls. I wasn't trying to buy you. After all we've shared, all we've been through together. I mean, can't you just accept the way I feel about you? I mean, what is it you're so scared of? I can't stay here talking about this. My daughter's missing, that's more important. Yeah. Well, we need to talk about you and me sometime. Yeah, well, not now, please. We need to find somewhere else to stay. How can we? We haven't got enough money. We haven't even got enough money for food. We'll find some. I hate this. I want to go home. No, Lynn. Well, everyone else is getting ready for Christmas, and we're just stuck down here. Do you want to end up in court and get sent away? That's why we came here, remember? I don't care. I don't care as long as I'm home. Well, don't be stupid. We can't just give ourselves up. Look, Lee, I'll get us some money, I promise. How? Well, we can go shoplifting and sell the stuff. No chance. That's why we're down here now. And I'm not getting caught down here. We won't get caught. We'll be careful. No. I'm going home. Oh, well, how? You can't even afford the bus fare. Well, I'll hitch. Come on, we can do it together. No, I'm not going. If you won't come, I'll go shoplifting on my own. Are you coming or not? No. I'm gonna hitch. You leave me on my own? Well, come with me then. No, I don't want to. I don't want to go back there ever. I want to stay down here. Well, I'll see you then. Tell my mum I'm all right and not to worry. See you then. Ta-ra.
Joe, he's excelled himself this year. He's written the card instead of getting Kath to do it. Dad. <laughs> I'm sorry, look. I just keep imagining all sorts about these kids who run away and never come back. Oh, I'll leave you to do that. How do we know? <laughs> Where did we go wrong? Hey, we haven't gone wrong. Look, you know Ollie loves Christmas. He wouldn't want to miss that. Why didn't you go and have a No, no. I'm going out on the bike. I'll soon be out looking. Yeah, well, be Going around to see it. We all went. Do you want to go and get some sweets from Mr. Dixon's? Yeah. I um. I just came round to give you the keys to the house. What for? I'm leaving, Mick. I packed everything in the car. I'm off to Mum's for Christmas. Then I start my new job on January the 9th. You know the police have dropped the charge. Everything's all right now. I was going to take the for sale sign down off the house and ask if me and you could start again. I'm sorry, Mick. I'm not prepared to try anymore. It's not about you being arrested. It, it's about you and me. I don't think me and the Johnsons could ever work. We don't mix. Why? You can't say that. Yes, I can, Mick. We're totally different. You're quite happy to plod along, staying put. I want something more. I want to get on in life. I'm prepared to go anywhere to get what I want. You made it quite clear that you didn't want anything like that. Look, I was out of my mind with all this robbery stuff hanging over me head. I didn't know what I was saying half the time. Well, does that mean that you changed your mind about Glasgow? Or would you do something decisive for a change? Would you sell all this and come with me now? You know how I feel about that. That's why we won't work, Mick. You'd have compromised if you really wanted me. What about you? Where's your compromise? It's too late to argue. There's some things there for the kids for Christmas. I have to go. Look, shouldn't we... Shouldn't we talk about this? Well, what am I going to tell the kids? Explain it to them after I've gone, Mick. You're their father. You'll do it better than me. Please. Leo, James. My has got to go now. So I'll be here for Christmas. Where are you going? I'm sorry. I won't be coming back. I'm going to go and live in Scotland. Forever? It's what I've decided to do. Merry Christmas, Marianne. Hi, lad. Merry Christmas to you, lad. Yeah, what did I tell you she'd be back? Hey, hey, right, kids. Yeah, you. Hi, Gemma. Bye, Leo. Goodbye, Mick. Goodbye to my kids. Sure, it feels a bit too symmetrical. I'll be drawing my flaming pension at this rate. How about over there? Oh, good idea, Bev. Let's see what it looks like there. Um, 
unless we put it up there. You what? Oh, yeah, Pan, definitely. OK, let's try it. Uh, a little higher, please. You've not put that in the middle. Haven't you got anything better to do? Penny asked my advice, actually. Didn't you, Pen? No, I think it's best if we take it back to the first place, if you don't mind. Thank you, Jimmy. Right, well, time for me to go. Oh, I've left a list for you on the kitchen table. A what? Oh, just a few things that need doing before Barry gets back. And what about we work at the club? Oh, I'm sure there's plenty of time for you to do whatever it is you do at the club. Bye. Don't worry, Pen. I'll keep his nose to the grindstone. Oh, there's a list for you too as well, Bev. <sighs> Shoplifting in there, then you nicked him in five minutes flat. Are you the store detective? Uh, uh, no. No, I'm just someone who doesn't like to see a young girl get herself into trouble, that's all. I'm sort of a social worker. I try and help homeless kids. Well, right, I'd better get off then. Are you, yeah, are you hungry? A bit, yeah. Well, how do you fancy egg and chips or something? I can't go with you. I don't know who you are. Anyway, I haven't got any money. Oh, look. Come and have something to eat. I don't want to see a young girl going hungry with no money in her pocket. It's only around the corner. All right. Hey, better put these back, haven't I? Hello, Mandy. Hello, oh, it's you. Well, that's not a very nice welcome during this time of goodwill. Yeah, well... Yeah, well, I'll be spending Christmas with my mother. So I thought I might spend an hour or so with you before the holidays. Please don't. I can't think about anything like that while my daughter's missing. Missing? Yeah, Rachel. She ran away because she was in trouble for shoplifting. The boy next door's gone too. I mean, I'm worried sick. I can't cope with any arrangements. Hey, of course, of course. Why didn't you tell me? Well, why should I tell you? Because I care. And I'm not without contacts, you know. I could put the word around for a couple of kids on the run in town. Would you? Well, it's the very least I can do. Now, is there anything else? Anything at all? Do you need money? Uh, Are you sure? No, I'll be fine. Honestly, Mandy, I don't think there's any need to worry. I mean, what kid wants to be hanging around the streets at Christmas? Oh. I'm only here to give your mother my office number. Well, don't waste your breath. She's already paid for your new office. <sighs> Merry Christmas, Mandy. I hope you hear from Rachel. Bye. So what did he want? I thought you'd paid him in full. Well, like he said, he wanted to tell me about his new office. Oh, come off him, Mum. You know that's not the truth. It is. Well, what was he doing here? Is he trying to get you in debt again? Well, he wondered if I wanted a new loan for Christmas presents and that. Well, you didn't agree? No, of course not. But he said he might have contacts and might be able to find Rachel. Mum, he's just saying that. All he wants is for you to be in debt to him again. Now, you don't take another penny off that man, do you hear me? We don't even know each other's names, do we? I'm Nick. <laughs> so go on, what's yours then? And, um, Beth. Oh, that's a nice name. So what are you doing down here then? I was better put home. Why is that? Well, we never have any money. I and mean, we've got these two fellas always coming round. It's not like when my dad was alive. So, uh, did you do a bit of shoplifting down in Liverpool? Oh, until I got caught, yeah. Did you go to court? Well, that's why I'm here. I decided to get away before all that. <laughs> that's amazing, that is. I mean, I came down here when I got caught shoplifting in Manchester. Hey, fancy us both coming down here for the same reason. And we're both Manx, eh? What is it you do for a job? 
sort of social worker, is it? Yeah, sort of, yeah. Yeah, I try and help young people get started out down here. Yeah, find them flats, find them jobs if I can. Oh. Can you find me something? Isn't it more important to find somewhere to stay first? I'll be all right. Yeah, well, there's plenty of shop doorways. Oh, no, no. If, if you want to stay at mine, you're welcome. It'll be a room you're on at that. Oh, it's starting to rain out there. Well, I won't mind staying just one night. Great. Well, look, I'll just pay for this little lot and then we can go. OK, Beth? No news at all, eh? Looked everywhere. I can think of nothing. Yeah. Yeah, you've been sneaking a look at this while your sister's out. What are you, one of these trannies? Oh, cool, way, will yeah. I'm just getting some ideas for the Crimble Prezi for Beth. Are you gonna buy her some sexy stuff like this? Yeah, well, I was thinking of getting her one of them silky camisole things. Mike, we were both there that time. She told us she was a lesbo. So, I like her and I want to get her something. Yeah, but if you're buying a bird something like this, you want to make sure there's some return. You're wasting your dosh, mate. You'll never get her in the sack. I've already slept with her. Honest? And you're like, you know, I thought she was only into women. Well, nothing happened, like, but... I don't know, I like her. I fancy her, and I know that she was on with a fella who used to live in your house. What? You mean she's both ways, like? Yeah, and I think if I stick around, then maybe she might start feeling something for me. And I'll take it from there. You've really got a thing for her, haven't you? I suppose I have, yeah. Look, that'll be it. Uh, don't say anything about this, OK? My lips are sealed, lover boy. Hey, you don't think she's into threesomes, do you? Who's into threesomes? Uh, nothing. That's just Carl fantasising as usual. Well, look, I know it's not exactly the Hilton, but it's better than a cardboard box or a shop doorway. It's got a lock and key here, so you can have a bit of privacy in that. Right, well, uh, I was going to have a drink. Don't you fancy beer or cider? Cider, please. Put the telly on if you like. Make yourself at home, mate. <laughs> no. What is this do exactly? Mm -hmm. It's that 12 night med ball. Mm. Dinner jackets, long frocks, strictly ballroom. You fancy all that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've got a few tickets. I can't refuse, can I? Mm. And, ladies and gents, our first competitors in the come dancing competition are Beth Jordash and Mike Dixon. Beth is a medical student from Manor Park, while Michael is a dolite with two left feet. No! <laughs> <laughs> God, you're useless, you. If you want to be my partner, we're going to have to take some proper dance lessons, right? OK. Promise? Yeah, promise. <laughs> you don't want to pull me up? <laughs> oh, you know, I shouldn't be enjoying myself. I should be out with Sinbad looking for Rachel. I've tried her. It's a needle and a haystack. It's like trying to find a job. You should ask Max Farnham. They're looking for dishwashers at the restaurant over Christmas. That stuck-up sod knocked me back last time I asked. Well, ask again. They need the staff. Oh, God, I know it's work, actually. I'm going to be late. Do you think he'd take me on? Well, it's worth a try, isn't it? I wouldn't bother with that, mate. It's give you. I'll see you later. Uh. Listen, mate, if you put a few bob in my back pocket, I'm not moaning. Did you see that, then? On the couch? She was all over me. I'm in there, I'm telling you. Are you sure, mate? Well, I've been invited to this ball thing. You saw what she was like. I reckon I'm deaf or getting the green light. Don't you ever go back to Manchester? What's the point? Well, you've never seen your family since you're 15. Oh, you don't need families, Beth, not down here. I mean, there's loads to do and you can make your own life. Uh, you just need a start. Friends down here. Oh, you make it sound dead easy. Well, it is if you know people. And I can help you meet them. Don't do that. Look, it's all right. It's all right. I'm sorry. I, j I just want you to feel welcome. It's just a friendly kiss, you know. I hardly know you. Well, I, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. I, you're a nice looking girl. I just had a bit to drink. That's all. It, it won't happen again. I promise. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to bed now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've had a long day. Night then.
Good night. Any time you like, Lance, okay? Yeah. Oh, for goodness sake, David, keep still. You are worse than a child. The police car's just gone. Oh, I wonder if there's any news. Keep still. Oh, this is... I'm supposed to be producing a pantomime, I'm not playing the dame. There's no choice now, Mr. Brennan's ill, Major. Who else is going to fill the breach at such short notice? I'm sorry, but the whole idea is ridiculous. Oh, don't be so excitable, David. Look, there are two young children out there missing. It's my duty as chairman of the BRA to get some sort of proper search party organised. We need a strategy. A military approach, eh, Major? Absolutely. You must admit, Jean, it is a wonderful idea. I'm sure the police can handle it in their own way. That is where you are wrong, Jean. They are already overworked. It's up to decent citizens like myself to give them a helping hand. I, uh, I got these for Josh. A card for his birthday a month, Crimbo. Oh, you needn't have bothered, you know. Well, I had to get him something, didn't I? Yeah, but... Well, do you really think you should be buying Josh any? I'm buying them for me half-brother, Dad. No one else. Anyway, what you appreciate it. And I, uh, I got this for you. Happy birthday on Crimbo Day. What can I say? Thanks, son. Well, I couldn't exactly say I forgot your birthday on the biggest day of the year, could I? I suppose not. Is, um, is this just from you or from our Jackie as well? Um. Just from me, Dad. She only comes in here when she knows I'm not around, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, it's Katie that comes in. Do you see much of her son? Do you talk to her? Well, I think she's going to take a bit of time to come round, Dad. She hates what's happened between Beth and you and me, Mum. Yeah, well... Maybe next Christmas, eh? <laughs> anyway, thanks for these. No probs. Uh... I was going to get you a few presents and stuff, and for me mum and Jackie, but... But you're skint. Yeah. <laughs> and tell me, would, uh, £40 come in handy? Well, seeing as I haven't won the lottery yet, that'd be nice, yeah. There you go. Now I really know me and you again, I'm better. Merry Christmas, son. All the best. Why won't you visit me, David? You know, we could have a wonderful evening together under the mistletoe, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. That's not all that will be roasting if Jean discovers us. Audrey, I'm trying to tell you, I can't. I cannot go on deceiving Jean anymore. Well, she's going to find out if I start telling tales out of school, isn't she? Visit me. Look, I'm sorry. I really can't. I can't allow myself to make the same mistake again. 
wasn't a mistake. Far from it. The other week was just the beginning. I'm Scarlet O'Hara, and you're my rat butler. Please visit me tonight. I can't, Audrey. Give me something to remember when I'm alone with my Tio Pepe and my Matt Monroe Christmas long play. I can't bear the thought of Christmas knowing you don't want me. Tonight, David, or am I just have to tell Jean? I'll be waiting. Well, have you managed to persuade him? No, I'm afraid she hasn't. Look, I'm going out. David, the costume! Aye, aye, Bing. What's this? Jean. Secret Jean. cross dress, are you? Let me in, please. <laughs> What are you doing down there, kid? Oh, the bank's lad, aren't you? The one that ran away? Don't tell anyone I'm here, will you? Oh, why? I think they're staying here for keeps, are you? Do you know what I reckon? I think you've come back and you're too scared to knock on your mum and dad's door, am I right? My dad'll kill me. Oh, behave, you won't do that. Well, you don't know him. Listen, you can't run away forever, you know. And I should know. I've tried it myself. Sooner or later, you gotta face up to things, get it over with. Hey, I'll tell you what. Here. You get that down your while you never think, eh? See what's best. Staying on the run or having Crimbo at home, eh? Problem. I just, uh, just wanted to do your ringing. My mum. Oh, yeah? What for? I've decided to let her know that I'm okay and I'm going to stay down here and get a job. Oh, great. But the thing is, well, do you mind if I stay on here a bit just till I get a job and everything? Uh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Just till you've got yourself settled, will Oh, thanks, mate. Can I go and ring her then? Uh, I'll only be a minute and I'll pay you back when look, I can. Look, it's not that bad. But think about your mum. What if she gets upset, though, and you try and talk you into going home? You don't want that, do you? I've got to let her know before Christmas, though. Well, why don't you write? I know. Send her a Christmas card. Might not get there in time. You can send it first class. It's cheaper than clocking up my phone, Billy. Eh? All right, now. ta -da. Hello, Bing. What can I do you for? Don't tell me. Sell a tape and drawing pins. Everybody is after sell a tape and drawing pins today. No, no, I just wanted to have a word with you, actually, Ron. It's about the pantomime. Oh, you want a sack, Bev, for singing like a strangled cat, and you're after my blessing, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Bev has been doing splendidly. No, the thing is that um, we've been having enormous problems casting one of the major roles. It's been impossible to find anyone suitable, and, well, the right man for the job has been staring us in the face all the time. Your good self. Who, me? Absolutely. You see, we need someone who can tell a good joke, sing a song, someone who can establish an instant rapport with an audience, someone, in fact, with showbiz in their veins. And it's by public demand, Ron. The over-55s have talked to practically nothing else since you graced us with your performance last time. Well, <laughs> you see, if I can't cast you, I might have to cancel the show, and that'd be a great loss, because it is for charity, you see. It's the Down Syndrome Association. Mm. Uh, when is it, Bing? It's Boxing Day in the Church Hall. Ah. It's a very important part, Ron. It's a major role, and if you could see your way, I, I'd be terribly grateful. All right, Bing, I'll do it. Oh, marvellous, marvellous. A star is born. <laughs> hey, hang on, Bing. Do I get to see a script? And, uh, you know, do I get a cosy and all that? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'll be in touch very soon. Bye. Yeah, but Bing... <laughs> Bing! Right, I've done it. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got to nip down the street, so I'll post it for you if you like. Oh, will you? Yeah, no problems. It won't be a minute. Get yourself some toast, eh? Hey, um, how do you fancy doing a bit of Christmas shopping down Oxford Street? Look, I know you haven't got any money, but you must need a few things. You can always pay me back. Are you sure? I wouldn't have offered if I wasn't, would I? Thanks, Nick. Right. I'll see you later. Come 
on, kid. Don't be worrying. We'll be all right. Look, and everyone's been looking. How come he's with you? I uh, found him hanging there on top of the coast. Well, I couldn't just leave him, could I? Well, er. Uh, thanks. Oh, no, Seth. No, I told him best thing to do was to come back. You know, face up to things, make a clean breast of it. Well, when you've done something wrong, gonna take your punishments, haven't you? Thanks. Uh, getting to be a bit of a thing with me, this, isn't it? I was the one that found the uh, Farnham kid, you know, Tommy, when he got lost. Do you remember? <laughs> Esther Ranson's going to be wanting to pin one of those awards on me, isn't she? Where have you been, son? London. My God. What the hell have you been doing down there? Uh, and where's Rachel? She stayed down there. You are? Hey, listen. Rachel, Rachel. Where is she? You said they were back. I'm sorry, I assumed that they were together. Where is she? I'll get going. At least I found one of them, eh? Hope everything works out okay. Where is she? I'm sorry, love, but she's down in London. London? You just left her in London. Why did you leave her? How could you be so come on stupid? Now, love, you can't be blaming him. She wouldn't come with me. Well, where? Where did you leave her? On the street. Which street? Uh, try and think where, son. I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, God. She's all on her own down there. Anything could happen. No, it's all right. It's all right. Get him upstairs, love. <clears throat> Look, I'll stay with Mandy for the moment. Find out everything you can from the lad, eh? All right. Thanks, Dave. See you later. Bye, Dave. I've got to find her. Anything could happen to her down there. I mean, why did he leave her? Try and calm down, please. At least we know where she is. She's in London, for God's sake. Mant, Jimmy's just told me. I've got to go down there now. I've got to find her. I really right. don't think that's No, well, look, help. you stay here just in case she rings. I'll go down. We'll both go down. No, stay here in case she turns up. Look, I'll go with you. At least we can start looking a name to be back late tonight. Can't let you do that, Mr. Crosby. No, no, no. I feel it's my duty as chairman of the Residents Association. Uh, look, Sinbad, get Mandy home and settled, right? I'll meet you at the taxi rank in half an hour. Oh, and we're going to need a couple of photographs of Rachel. Okay, thanks, Bing. Will we be seeing you later? I think I'll just have a quiet night in with the archers, unless I happen to get any surprise visitors. <sighs> Good news. Young Lee Banks is back. Oh, that's wonderful. Unfortunately, young Rachel is still on the loose in London. Have the police been told? Just about to do that. What's it got to do with you? Well, I'm afraid that I've got to go down to London immediately with Sinbad to try and help him find her. But it's Christmas Eve tomorrow. You can't just go off and leave. I have to go, Jean. As chairman of the BRA, how can I refuse a request from Mandy Jordash for help when her daughter might be in danger? Don't worry, we'll be home tonight. Although, uh, I'm afraid it does mean that I won't be available for the rest of the day. It'll cost a fortune going down there. No, no. As chairman, I'm authorising the payment of all expenses from association funds. What can you and Sinbad hope to do on your own in London? Well, at least we can try, Jean. I could go with you, Major. Maybe I could be of assistance. No, I'm afraid the BRA funds wouldn't quite stretch to that, Audrey. Thank you. Oh, well, I suppose if you have to go... You are lucky, Jean, to have such a decisive man of action. Aren't I just? I think you can expect a hero's welcome from the over 55s after an initiative like this. Here's to a record-breaking Christmas collection. Cheers. Be a nice bit of kudos for you to bow to the round table on. Be sorry to see you go. Mind you, you might be seeing a lot more of me. 
I want to get cracking and make this Mr. Grant an offer for his share. Uh, so quickly? I prefer to move fast. No one to get stung for capital gains. Do you think there's a chance I'll get to see Grant before Christmas? Well, Penny is expecting him back Christmas Eve, I think. <sighs> Actually, I'm not looking forward to it. He's a bit of a hothead. When he finds out about this bid, he'll probably take it out on me. How do you mean, hothead? He's a bit of a man of action. Um, we had this protection racket here when we first started out with the restaurant, and Barry got shut of him by filling his car full of cement. You're joking? Oh, yeah, yeah. Saw it with my own eyes. Did Penny not tell you about him? A little, not much. You seem to have hit it off, you two. I enjoyed her company, if that's what you mean. And we do seem to have a lot in common. Will you be seeing her again? I suppose I will. If she's going to be working in our restaurant. <sighs> she's never been to London in her life. She won't be able to cope on her own. Oh, it'll be all right, you know. You should try not to worry. Yeah, well, I am worried, Mike. I'm really worried. <sighs> Come here. She'll be OK. She's probably on her way back from London now, wanting to get back for Christmas. Yeah, well, I hope so. <sighs> One pint of milk. Yeah. I'll take over there. Thanks. I'm just living to the loo. I'm sorry about that. Did I interrupt something? Yeah, just a bit, yeah. I didn't know. You and Beth were, you know. Well, it's getting that way. You must have noticed. Well, now you mention it, yeah. Hey, Beth tells me you and her are going to take some ballroom lessons. Yeah, yeah, mad, innit? I used to do a bit myself, waltz, tango. My dad taught me when I was about 12. He put me in for all kinds of lessons. I won medals. Did your dad do lessons? Yeah, he was all talking, no legs. Hey, Beth, Emma does ballroom. Really? Go ahead, show us. Well, yeah, hold me lightly. I'm going to try a box. Oh, I can't do it. You can, <laughs> come on. What, like this? Uh-huh. OK. And that's it. <laughs> Come to the med ball with me and Mike. Well, if I can find a partner, yeah. Look, I've got to get back to work. Maybe I can show you a few steps another time. Yeah, definitely. Okay, try. See ya. Dinner. Look, Mike, I better get going myself. Oh, listen, why don't you stay for a meal? You know, we can get a video out, take your mind off things. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I should be with Mum, really. <sighs> Thanks for being there. I really appreciate it. See you soon. That is not a Christmas tree. It will last for years. It only cost half what you gave me. It was a bargain off a mate. I don't want a bargain. I want a real traditional pine tree with needles that makes a home look complete. Not this dreadful, tacky excuse for a living thing. All right, all right, back it goes. Oh, Sam. Hello again. Still have problems? Nothing I can't handle. You got a minute? Yes, of course. Come on in. Just trying to get the place ready for Christmas. And the elusive Mr Grant's return. Hopefully, yes. Um, would you like a coffee or anything? No, no, nothing for me, thanks. So this is the home of the man of action, eh? Max was telling me about that business of filling the car with concrete. Oh, what has he been saying? Just acquainting me with the opposition, as it were. I must say, this guy interests me. Oh, I'm sure you'll meet him soon enough. So, um, what can I do for you? All right, cards on the table. I came round to ask you to spend Christmas at my place. I've got some friends staying and I think you'd enjoy it. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Thank you, but oh, Barry expects me here and I really can't let him down. Oh, fair enough. I don't know where to start. I haven't got a clue either. Perhaps we should be checking hostels for the homeless, social security, B&B, sort of It's getting a bit late, you know, B. I think we should stay here tonight and have another good look around tomorrow. It's Christmas Eve tomorrow, Cinder. We've got to get back sometime. I know, but we've got to do something to find Rachel. How could it? All these people. She could be anywhere. Yeah, and she could be in trouble. Look, let's book into a hotel for tonight and have another good look around tomorrow, OK? Come on. All right. I feel better now. Yes, yeah, thanks. 
Do you know how much worry you've caused me and your mother? I'm sorry. So why did you do it, Lee? Hmm? Why? I was scared. <laughs> you had nothing to be scared of. The police were only going to give you the telling off. Well, I didn't know that, did I? You told me I was going to go back to the secure unit. I was scared. I didn't want to get locked away again. Yeah, well, we shouldn't have frightened you like that. But the fact still remains, you went shoplifting. It was her next door, wasn't it? She led you on. Why can't you have a mind of your own, lad? It was the same with that joyriding thing. Them other lads egged your own and you did it. If other kids told you to put your hand in the fire, would you do it? We're worried about you, son. What are you going to grow up like, hey? What's going to happen? Are me and your dad going to get a phone call saying you've been joyriding again? That you've been arrested for stealing? I'm sorry. It's no good being sorry if you aren't going to change. So, are you going to change? Change for the better? I'll try, yeah. Right then. Let's try and have some sort of a Christmas then, shall we? Ah, this is it. Oh, I wonder if Chris Bonington ever stayed here. I could do with flame and oxygen. Mind you, we were lucky finding this place. But you'd have found somewhere a bit more salubrious. Oh, yeah, with more salubrious prices and all. It's Crimbo Bing. All that's left is the stable. A double bed? I thought you asked for a twin bedded room. Yeah, well, this is all I had left. Well, it's better than sleeping in a cardboard box, isn't it? My God, it's hardly the Dorchester, is it? Hey, it's comfy, though, isn't it? It's better than my little flat. You don't snore at anything, do you, Bing? Come on, let's have a look at you. Do you like it? You look brilliant. I'll pay you back your notice as soon as I find a job. I think you've been a bit too confident about getting a job, you know. There must be loads of jobs. There isn't. Why do you think I have to help people hanging around stations and living in cardboard boxes with nowhere to go? You will let me stay here, won't you? Well, I'd love to, but... I don't get paid that much. I can help with money. I'm good at shoplifting. We can sell what I get. Oh, don't be daft. You're getting it in no time. Look, if you do want to earn a bit of money, I can give you some work. Doing what? Well, I'm throwing a bit of a party at one of the hotels down the street. A sort of Christmas do for colleagues in there. I need someone to go around and have a bit of fun with, I guess. Well, I've been a waitress, you mean? Uh, like a waitress, yeah. Are you sure? Beth, this is your new life, remember? You'll be brilliant. <laughs> do you want a coffee or something? Sit down, come on. Can I make something to eat or something? I can't eat anything. I'm so worried about her. She's all on her own down there. Well, I'll try not to worry. She can look after herself. And anyway, she'll be back. She has to be. It's Christmas. Come here. A Channel 4 book entitled Brookside, Life in the Close is out now in bookshops, priced at £14.99.